Hello and welcome to Folklore of the Universe, the podcast with over 27 different herbs and spices. I'm your host, Kyle. This is episode 15. And with this episode, we're back to the longer formats again, because I'm not hellishly busy anymore. I'm all moved into the new place, I'm into the uh, art hanging phase of move-in, which I think is pretty end stage. I'm also all graduated from college, got a degree in history, which I'm going to use to do something with. And yeah, that's all sorted, so normal, normal size episodes again. So let's get to it. This week, this episode, their story's going to be a clinket one, but first we've got our Monster of the Week. This episode's Monster of the Week is the Puka, which comes from Irish folklore. The Puka is a shapeshifter. It looks like all sorts of different animals. It usually appears as some sort of horse or horse-like creature. What they'll do is wait for travelers who are going by themselves late at night or super early in the morning, and they will either trick them or force them to ride on the puka's back, then the puka will give them a crazy ride throughout the countryside, scare the crap out of them, and then drop them off back wherever. And typically, they will target people who are coming home from the pub or coming home from drinking. The way to counter a puka is, the only real way is to wear sharp spurs on your shoes, like you would for a horse, and then use those on the puka once you're riding it. So this will either let you control it and steer where it goes, instead of just through every bush and tree in the entire countryside, or it will hurt it so that it just throws you off and doesn't mess with you again. And typically to get people on its back, it'll either um, sort of hide in the roads, then just spring up under them and capture them that way, or it will trick them by rolling up, offering them a ride, but then they take that ride and it's not not the ride they wanted. Bad ride. Overall, though, they're not really that harmful. Like, they'll mess you up for one night, but they won't flat-out kill you, and they won't do any permanent damage, so they're kind of jerks, but not super, super malicious. And given how common the stories are that they target people coming home drunk, there seems to be some sort of anti-coming-home-drunk-at-2am type story dealio. So, if you're ever wondering, you know, should you, should you call an Uber? Other taxi services are available. Or walk home. Uh, call call the Uber, because you might, you might get puka and no one wants that. The puka are also kind of similar to the Kelpie, which is another type of horse, but the Kelpie will drag its rider down into the water and drown them, so they are much more malicious. And like I said before, the Puka are much less so. They're still jerks, but a lot chiller than drowning their riders. But now we're going to move on from the Puka. We're going to move on to our story today. And we do only have one. I'm still sort of transitioning back into doing the fuller, longer episodes with multiple stories. It's a process. You can't just snap your fingers and go back overnight. Gotta, gotta adjust. So just got the one for this episode. Probably try and do multiple for next episode, though. But this story is a Clinket one. The Clinket are the native people of Southeast Alaska, or one of the native peoples of Southeast Alaska. This story features Raven, who is a Clinket deity. It's sort of similar, he's very similar to Coyote in some Midwest native religions, where he is this animal trickster god. Also similar to Anansi the Spider in West Africa, and to Loki in Norse mythology. There are all these tricksters who sometimes do good things, sometimes do bad things, but overall they're just sort of chaotic and make, make things go down. Or in this case, make things go up, because this story is called How Raven Stole the Sun. Long ago, there was only darkness. A greedy old man and his daughter kept the sun, the moon, and the stars hidden in three cedar boxes. They kept the light all for themselves. It's hard to go hunting or fishing in the dark, said Raven. The greedy man must learn to share. The next time the man's daughter went to get water from the spring, Raven was waiting. He turned himself into a tiny hemlock needle and fell into her basket. The girl dipped her basket into the spring and took a long drink. She swallowed the needle with the water. Several months later, The girl had a baby boy. The baby had bright, glittery eyes like a raven, but the girl and her father didn't suspect that the baby was really raven in disguise. One day, the baby began to cry. Gah! Gah! He wailed in raven's rasping voice. 
Please stop crying, begs the grandfather. But the baby did not stop. He cried all day, and he cried all night. The old man and his daughter tried everything to keep the baby quiet, but nothing worked. Finally, the grandfather gave the baby the smallest cedar box. Play with this, he said. It should keep you quiet. The shiny stars inside the box made the baby laugh. He tossed them into the air. The stars floated out through the smoke hole and into the sky. The baby began to wail again. Gah! Gah! Quickly, daughter, cried the old man. Give him the second box. Inside the second box was the moon. The baby patted the moon happily and rolled it over the floor. He bounced it against the walls. Finally, he bounced the moon so hard it flew up the smoke hole just like the stars. The baby began to cry even louder than before. The grandfather covered his ears. The last box! Open the last box! He yelled. The baby opened the third box and pulled out the sun. With a happy giggle, he tossed the sun through the smoke hole and into the sky. Gah! Gah! crowed the happy baby in Raven's rasping voice. It's Raven! cried the grandfather. We've been tricked! But before the angry old man could grab him, Raven changed back into a bird. He flew out through the smoke hole into the bright sunshine. The greedy old man was angry, but Raven didn't care. The sun, the moon, and the many bright stars were stuck up in the sky. The earth was no longer dark, and it's been that way ever since. The End This is another one of those origin stories or creation stories. More towards the creation story because it's telling how a fundamental part of the world got where it is now. All the light stuff in the sky. What's interesting to me about this is how similar it is to the Prometheus story from Greek mythology, because in both cases you have this figure, Raven in this and Prometheus in that, stealing something like the fire or the sun and then giving it to everyone. And the difference is that Raven doesn't get punished for it, whereas Prometheus does, but still an interesting parallel about this benevolent deity figure stealing something really nice and then distributing it. Mark would approve, I think. And like I said before, we really see how Raven's trickster god's powers come into play here. So one of his most iconic powers is shapeshifting, along with being really, really smart. Which makes sense, because Ravens are super, super smart already. Which is probably where associating Raven with this smart trickster god came from. Similar to how coyotes are really smart, and that's why they became a trickster god in the Midwest. And spiders, um, okay, I don't know where Anansi the spider came from. But spiders, they could be smart, you know, they kill bugs, they know that bugs are bad. So smart trickster, it checks out, checks out. It should be noted that this is just one version of the story. There are many versions with lots of little differences and little details that aren't the same across all of them. So this is only one way of telling the story, uh, specifically the way I could find an online text version for free of telling the story. This story is also not exclusive to the Clinket. Uh, stories about Raven, and very similar to this one, are all across the Pacific Northwest and Alaska in general among the native peoples. Raven is a pretty iconic and universal figure in many different cultures. I really like how he is so clever and creative in getting the sun and stars. This whole Mission Impossible infiltrate the family thing is pretty good, pretty wild because he could just do some more basic trick or just take it by force, but the way he does it is pretty A plus for creativity. It does feel very trickster gaudy. It feels like something like Loki would also try. I also like how totally relatable it is for the old man. Because if you've ever been on a plane and there's been a baby crying, crying away, like, oh my god, I would totally give him the sun if it'd make him shut up. Holy shit. So yeah, if, like, if you're stuck in a little cabin and the baby's just going, like, you give him that sun. Because, hot damn, they make a lot of noise. I am a little surprised that they didn't catch on to Raven after he threw the stars and the moon up, though. Like, I guess they were so, so uh, desperate to keep him quiet that they didn't think that, yo, this guy's stealing all our light. But I guess Raven's just that good. Which goes to show, you should be nice to Ravens, because they're smart, and if you're not, 
they'll take your your precious treasures and give them to the people and start communism or something like that, which nobody wants. But that's all I have for this episode, so I think I'm going to wrap it up. And uh, I realize this one's still very, very short, so sorry about that. I thought it was going to go longer, but I guess I'm stuck into this mentality of making the short ones. I, maybe I've, I've forgotten the old ways. No, I haven't. I'll, next episode, I'll do multiple stories, and that should drag it out longer. And that'll be golden. So, thank you for listening. Please, uh, you know, you know, the, you know the drill. Share this around, friends and family, yada yada yada, leave reviews, whatever, promotion shit you want to do. I don't care. No, I do. Please, please do that. We need more listeners. But, I have been Kyle. I will see you next episode in two weeks' time, and goodbye. <laughs>